There's one political issue that unites us all, whether we realize it or not. In fact, if a politician ran on this issue, they would likely get support from folks who lean both to the right politically and folks who lean to the left politically. I'm just a Mr. Beat. Just another person in the media. Wait, I better explain what the media is. The media is simply communication that reaches a large audience. Anyway, many in the media don't let us know about this one political issue that unites all of us. And not to sound conspiratorial, but hear me out. It's because most media is owned by big corporations. And, oh yeah, I first better explain what a corporation is. A corporation is a business legally separate from the people who run it. We tend to automatically assume all corporations are huge, but most of them are actually small businesses. But the vast majority of the media? Heh. <laughs> yeah. It's controlled by just a few very, very big corporations. Oh, and the script I wrote three varies, so let me do that part over again. It's controlled by just a few very, very, very big corporations. In fact, these five control the majority of American media. So perhaps that's why they don't often report that most of us are united on one issue. Corporate welfare. It's corporate welfare, Lemon. Corporation. This is the kind of financial extortion we could again end up having because of this addiction we seem to have with corporate welfare. It has to end. We have to end corporate welfare now. And it truly doesn't matter where you lean politically. Folks who lean to the left, folks who lean to the right. Capitalists, socialists, communists, libertarians, anarchists, conservatives, liberals. They all generally agree that corporate welfare is bad. In fact, when you search, quote, corporate welfare on YouTube, which is where you're probably watching this media right now, by the way. The first videos that come up talking trash about it are from John Stossel, a commentator who leans to the right, and Robert Reich, a commentator who leans to the left. Well, I'd also better explain what corporate welfare is, you know, since that's what this video is about. Corporate welfare is financial aid given by a government to corporations. So yes, we're talking about public funds, taxpayer money, going to corporations. Ralph Nader first popularized the phrase way back in 1956, and he has spent most of his life fighting it. I've often said that half of what Washington does is as an accounts receivable shoveling out goodies on the backs of taxpayers to business interests. The most common form of corporate welfare are subsidies. A subsidy is a direct or indirect payment from a government to a private business. Yes, sometimes governments straight up just give private businesses money, but they also provide free or cheap land or infrastructure improvements for businesses. Often people in government justify subsidies for the really big projects like sports stadiums or large factories since these big projects help the entire community by helping the local economy. The idea is that these big projects create jobs and attract consumers to spend their money there. Yankee Stadium, home of the New York Yankees, is one of the most expensive stadiums ever built. It ultimately cost more than $2.3 billion to build, but an estimated $1.2 billion of that money came from public subsidies. And stuff like this happens all over. My home state of Kansas recently offered $829 million in subsidies to Panasonic Energy so that it would build a new plant there. Often though, corporate welfare is just tax breaks. Corporations regularly use deductions and tax exemptions to avoid paying taxes altogether. In fact, Amazon, which is currently the fourth largest corporation in the world, paid no federal income taxes in the United States in 2018. None whatsoever. Despite making more than $11 billion in profit that year. In 2021, all of these American companies reported billions in profits, yet 
that same year, all of them paid a lower effective tax rate than you did. In fact, these four companies all got money back from the government. But it's not just individual corporations that get direct subsidies and tax breaks. Often, entire industries do. One of the most profitable industries in the United States, the fossil fuel industry, is subsidized, despite the industry threatening the environment. In fact, it gets more than $20 billion in subsidies each year. The pharmaceutical industry, which, you know, everybody loves, and which has notoriously profited in recent years selling expensive, life-saving medication, is also heavily subsidized. Between 2010 and 2016, all 210 drugs approved by the Food and Drug Administration benefited from subsidies. The technology industry gets billions in subsidies each year. The agriculture industry gets billions in subsidies each year. The defense industry gets billions in subsidies each year. I have a whole video about the military industrial complex, by the way, if you want to check it out. Oh, it's gone. Sorry, you missed your opportunity. The real estate industry even gets subsidized. Despite a growing housing crisis in which people can no longer afford to buy or even rent homes. In 2021, the real estate industry got nearly $38 billion in subsidies. So whether it's big oil, big pharma, big tech, big ag, big defense, big real estate, big daddy, big mama, it appears that all of us are helping to pay for it. Corporate welfare also comes in the form of exclusive contracts. Governments do pick winners and losers, and politicians do play favorites with certain companies, often due to personal connections. In recent decades, corporate welfare really tends to skyrocket when there is an economic crisis. And if there's one thing that has unified Democrats and Republicans, and everybody in between, is that we all hated the bank bailout. Citigroup, Merrill, and seven other banks, which got $175 billion in tax-funded bailout money, paid out $33 billion in bonuses. Bailing out Wall Street is the only way to save Main Street, so says the president. It worked. That's what the president said about the taxpayer bailout as he saluted the official return of America's auto industry. The federal government was very quick to bail out the banks a decade ago. No questions asked. The federal government was very quick to bail out the auto industry. How about bailing out the nation's largest city? How about bailing out the epicenter of this crisis where people have been suffering? Mohammed, was this a bailout? Yeah, it was a bailout. Yep, it's often not the taxpayer getting bailed out during a recession. Instead, it's the taxpayer bailing out corporations. Too big to fail. Too big to fail. Too big. To fail. The idea is that if we let these giant corporations fail, our entire economy will collapse. And, uh, yeah, that probably would happen, actually. And it would suck for all of us. But isn't that evidence that our economy relies too much on just a small handful of huge corporations? We saw governments bail out corporations and industries quite a bit during the Great Recession, which peaked in 2008 and started when the American housing bubble burst, when people couldn't afford to pay back their mortgages anymore. In response to this bailing out of corporations, many of which were at least partially responsible for the economic crisis to begin with, by the way, people got understandably angry. Two big movements began as a reaction to corporate welfare at least partially, during the Great Recession. One was a left-leaning movement, the other was a right-leaning movement. Hmm. The Tea Party movement, the right-leaning one, focused on lowering government spending and lowering taxes, and Occupy Wall Street, the left-leaning one, focused on the influence of money in politics and income inequality. However, while both movements seemed to be on opposite ends of the spectrum, one thing united them. Their hatred of corporate welfare and special interests. Flash forward to the COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19! COVID-19! 
And once again, the United States government spent hundreds of billions of dollars bailing out both corporations and small businesses. But guess what? It also bailed out individuals and families quite a bit. And as it turns out, most Americans were just fine with that. By this point in the video, if you're still watching anyway, you likely agree with me that corporate welfare does more harm than good. That it, at the very least, is unfair. But that's just our opinion. There are strong arguments for corporate welfare. Many economists and politicians argue that corporate welfare is necessary to keep the economy growing. Countries have to compete in a global economy after all, which often makes it necessary to provide incentives to corporations to invest at home. Those incentives? Subsidies! Of course. And as I said earlier, the majority of economists argue that bailing out corporations and industries during an economic crisis is absolutely critical at preventing an even worse crisis. Think of it as a necessary evil. No one feels good about it, but the alternative would be much, much worse. Finally, often the biggest projects only happen to begin with due to government investment. They're just too big, too risky, too freaking expensive. So yeah, corporate welfare may be a necessary evil during crazy times or in certain circumstances, but that's not the problem. The problem is that corporate welfare is the norm. It's the status quo. It's something that governments have been doing for decades now, like it isn't no thing but a chicken wing, over and over again, despite it's not being popular. Then again, we know why. The current political system makes it so that politicians are easily bribed. Corporations that benefit from corporate welfare bribe politicians to give them subsidies and tax breaks, either through campaign contributions or through kickbacks. After all, influence peddling, or using one's influence in government in order to get special treatment, is often perfectly legal in the current system. Therefore, the current system must be reformed. There are plenty of reforms that can fight back against corporate welfare, from getting rid of gerrymandering, to term limits, to reducing the influence of lobbyists, to campaign finance reform, or ending corporate personhood just to name a few. But first, we just need to be aware of corporate welfare as a major problem. It's not even brought up, despite being arguably the quickest way to see how the entire political system is currently out of touch with most of its citizens. And perhaps raising awareness about corporate welfare is the quickest way for all of us to realize we're more united than most of the media wants us to think. Much of what drove the support for Ross Perot for president in 1992. I'm spending my money, not PAC money, not foreign money, my money, to take this message to the people. Ron Paul for president in 2008. Whether they're Republicans or Democrats, they're going to support the corporations. Even in medical care reform, who do you think is going to come out well on this? Corporations, drug companies, and insurance companies, they're being protected. And Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump for president in 2016. Legislation to provide some $53 billion. Billion dollars in corporate welfare with no strings attached to the highly profitable microchip industry. The special interests, Wall Street, the career politicians, the system is rigged, and I've been saying it for a long time. Was a backlash against corporate welfare, whether their supporters actually realized it or not. Those on the left end of the political spectrum tend to criticize corporations. Those on the right end of the political spectrum tend to criticize the government. But what if I told you that these corporations and the government were often on the same team? And the rest of us? We're not on that team. In fact, I predict the politicians in the next election who talk the most trash about corporate welfare are the ones who are more likely to get elected, no matter what their political affiliation. And you're never gonna see an ad campaign like this.
Tired of big corporations not getting enough handouts from the government? Tired of your tax dollars not going to bail out greedy, wealthy plutocrats? Want less money? Want corporations to have more money? Want them to keep raising prices despite us having less money? Then vote for me. Don't be fooled. Big oil, big pharma, and big tech are our friends. Corporations should pay no taxes. Heck, they should get free money. And I'm only saying this because they donated to my campaign. Uh, yeah. If you were horrified by what you just saw in that campaign ad, you're probably against corporate welfare. A shout out to Joe Cook, a Patreon supporter of mine who inspired me to make this video in the first place, and he just published an essay about corporate welfare. You can check out the link to his Substack in the description of this video. It's part of his common sense essays, and there are more to come. Thanks for watching.